Stay tuned for another message by Steve Porter of Refuge Ministries, a presence-driven ministry. On that note, we're going to, with no further ado, we're going to call up Steve Porter, our good friend. Praise the Lord. Thank you, three of you. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I woke up this morning in the upper room. And I had such an excitement in my spirit. Such an anticipation. That the Lord is going to do something very special in our midst. So it's been my prayer today. Lord Jesus, do that which I cannot do. And wasn't there a stirring during the worship? Especially that last song. A stirring. I tell you, whenever you center something on Jesus, He has a way of just coming and showing up. Hallelujah. And that's what my prayer is tonight. That the Lord would so touch our hearts, captivate us, that we would be forever changed. So I want you to get hungry tonight for the Lord. I want you to be hungry tonight for the Lord. Let your hunger, even during the message and going into the, the preach of the Lord, because you are yearning and you are longing. And my prayer tonight is that you would yearn and that you would long even more for the King. That the King of all glory would come in. So, Father, we acknowledge you. We acknowledge you, Jesus. We thank you that there's already a stirring here in Brantford. But, Lord, we've seen nothing yet. For we're just in the season of preparation. And I thank you, Father, that you are preparing our hearts, you're preparing us corporately. For open heaven. That special place. Where we have access to the throne room of God. Where lives are touched. Not by a man or a personality. But lives are touched by you, O oh Jesus. Oh, we desire for you to come and move in Brantford. Quicken us, Jesus. Stir us, Lord. Quicken our spirits, O oh God. Stir our spirits, O oh God. Stir up our hunger, Lord. Draw us, Lord, that we would run after Thee. Take us into the chambers of the Most High God. Let heaven crack open tonight. Let the very atmosphere of heaven pour into this meeting tonight in Jesus' name. For Lord, we are desperate for you. We are so hungry for you, Jesus. We so want heaven to come to earth. We so desire that your train would fill the temple. Father, we ask you that you would do that which we cannot do. That you would come and that you would touch hearts forever. Spirit of God, you are welcome in this place. Our dependency is upon you. We're leaning upon you, Jesus. You're offering us your arm. We're grabbing a hold of your arm. We're leaning upon you, our heavenly bridegroom. Oh, just to gaze at your face. Just to see your beauty. Just to know you like Enoch did. That we would walk after you. That our relationship with you would be true and real and genuine. Life changing. Father, we know that we can walk with you. Let us walk with you like we've never walked with you before. Jesus, you must come. Behold, you stand at the door and you knock. And we say, Lord Jesus, don't stand at that door, but come in. We will not allow your head to be filled with the dew. But we put a blanket 
a warm blanket of our love around you and we usher you to the fireplace and we sit with you and we commune with you on a level that we have never experienced before. Lord, make us a company of John the Beloveds that would lean upon your breast. That we would know you, not just know about you. Father, I ask that you would take a hot coal of fire that you would place it upon my lips tonight. My dependency is upon you. And I promise you the glory you should hide me behind the cross in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so these meetings have been preparational meetings. I believe in June when Christopher Cass is with us and Scott Waterman, I believe that we are going to have a mighty pray. And we will seek and we will knock. The Lord will come and He will visit us in a very special way. His presence will be here. And all oh, how I desire the very presence of the Lord to come and to change this region. So last night, we were talking about a secret that opens up the presence of the Lord, not only individually, but corporately. And we said that secret is humility. Amen. And I feel like I could give a whole other message on humility. And I feel like the Lord said, pause and bring it back later. Maybe it'll be next month or the month after. I'm not sure. But I believe that he asked me that I would continue giving you secrets that would open the heavens over your own life individually and corporately. So that's the direction that we're going to go tonight. I want to give you a few scripture verses in Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're going to open up with this portion and then we're going to get into the heart of the message. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. I people and personalities, but I'm here to tell you I want to see the Lord. I want to see the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up. I want to see the Lord high and lift it up, not a man lift it up, not a ministry lift it up, but the Lord lift it up. I saw the Lord, and He was high and lifted up. The King of glory was high and lifted up. Let that be a cry deep in your heart, that the Lord would be high and lifted up over Brantford and over the healing rooms. And in this meeting, that he would be high and lifted up. Oh, Jesus, we pause for just a moment and we lift you up. We lift you up above our agenda. We lift you up above our knees. We lift you up, Lord, because you are high and lifted up and you are the king of all glory. Jesus, we lift you up. Jesus, we acknowledge there is a stirring in this room tonight. You are high and lifted up. And His train filled the temple. Oh, Jesus. Isaiah stood there and saw the Lord high and lifted up. And the train of the Lord filled the temple. Can you see it in the Spirit tonight? Can you see the King of all glory and His train filling the temple of this very meeting? Can you see Jesus approaching the door of that church and His robe of righteousness follows behind Him? It glistens with the very atmosphere of heaven. He is high and lifted up and His train is filling the temple. I'm old enough to remember the train of the Lord, the very atmosphere of heaven, when He comes and He announces His presence. So there's something every time I use that phrase, announces His presence, 
there's something that shifts. I feel hot coals of fire on the inside of me begin to burn. Let me tell you that he wants to approach the city. And his train wants to fill up Brantford. His train wants to fill up Brantford. With his train is his majesty. With his train is his glory. With his train is his healing and his splendor. Can you see the train of the Lord? Can you see him announcing his presence? Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filling the temple. And above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With twain, he covered his face. And with twain, he covered his feet. And with twain, he did fly. And one cried unto the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. When his train fills the temple, it's not just an emotional high, but the holiness of God, the holiness of God, the purity of God, the wonderment of God. You see, when you get close to Jesus and you get a revelation of the holiness of God, you'll want to please Him. If you love Him, you'll want to obey His commandments. You'll want to please him. Why? Because Jesus is no longer just a painting on a wall. As lovely as that is, I love the painting. It's beautiful. And I hope we have more of them. But Jesus is not just a painting. We can receive a personal revelation of Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus is trained, filling the temple. Jesus who's sitting on the throne. And because of that revelation, we receive a revelation of the holiness of God. And therefore, our life is changed in that move of God. A sure way to know if you're in a move of God is you begin to feel convicted of the things that you should not be doing. You don't feel condemned. You feel convicted. There's a difference. When my earthly father would take me aside in a very loving way and he would say, Steve, I love you, but we need to change this. I knew my father loved me. Therefore, he was being honest with me. He didn't do it in a way that made me feel little or small. He did it in a way that made me feel as if I was loved and he was trying to help me. We were on the same team. There's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. So the Lord is about bringing a message of holiness to the church again. That we would receive a revelation of the holiness of God. So that we would become more like him. And as we do that, as we receive that revelation of the holiness of God, it attracts the presence of the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. I get excited about that verse too. There's so much good that's packed inside of this small chapter in these few verses. The glory of God is filling the earth. A revelation of His holiness is coming. He's raised a fly on a wall because who wants to be a fly? But can you imagine being a silent witness? Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. It must be the internet. We apologize for those that are watching online. But to be a silent witness and to see that beautiful sight that Isaiah was able to partake of. To be that silent witness and see the posts of the door begin to move. Oh Lord, I ask that you would come and move Move our hearts. Enlarge our capacities to receive more of you. Even shake the foundations of the city and reestablish it into a city filled full of open heaven. 
Let the house of God be filled with smoke. We'll talk about that in a little bit. The glory of the Lord, the tangible presence of the Lord is manifest glory coming in a service. I know you've heard this preached many times. But we are living in the day, we're living in the hour where the manifest glory of God is coming in like a cloud. His glory is filling the temple. And people are responding to that glory. They're responding to the manifested presence of the Lord. They're crying out to Him. Even as Isaiah did. He saw the doorposts move. He heard holy, holy, holy. He was receiving a revelation of the holiness of God. And verse number 5, it says, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes has not seen the King, the Lord of hosts. So he says, I'm unclean. I see the holiness of God. Seraphim unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with a tongue from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. So as we receive an audience with the king, when the glory of the Lord comes, and we get a revelation, a personal revelation of the holiness of God. And we begin to cry out, holy, holy, holy. And then we realize that we have some areas in our lives that we need to work on. Some things. The Lord is faithful to take a hot coal of fire and place it upon us that we may be purged and clean. To you, and then we would be touched by the fire of His presence. The fire of His presence. I knew that I was quickened by the Lord to call the conferences in Rochester and Brantford the fire of His presence. Because when the fire of His presence comes, it purges us, it changes us, it cleans us, it prepares us. It sets us free. It heals us. It delivers us. We're changed into His likeness. Do you want to see the presence of the Lord come with the fire of His presence? Well, the first thing that will draw that presence on your life and in your gathering is humility. And the second thing is the holiness of God. When the holiness of God is treasured and cherished, the Lord will be drawn to such a place. We can go, we've all been in meetings before. You can probably not talk in the way that we once did. Did we begin to fast? Did we shut off the television and say, no, I'm going to read the word? We've been in moves before. But this move that God is getting ready to bring us, that's already in the works, is a move that brings life change. That brings repentance. That brings stirring. That brings humility. That brings a revelation of the holiness of God. Do you desire that with all of your heart? It's so exciting. When the Lord comes and starts messing with your stuff, get excited. That means whom the Lord loveth, he chastens and scourges every son he receives. If he loves you, he's going to be active in your life. So when you're a little bit rude to that person in traffic, conviction comes. All of a sudden, the holiness of God fills the car. Sorry, Jesus. That waitress who acted like she could care less that you were there, and you just want to leave her a zero tip, and you say, I'm going to love her through it. Maybe she's having a set of islands. The community on the island was quite aware 
that the churches were empty, that the doors were closing, that there were no young people, that there was an apathy that had set in. And so a few people began to pray. There was a men's group from Barvis that met in a barn. And on their first night of praying, the Lord gave them a word that he was a covenant-keeping God. And they began to press in. At the same time, two elderly saints, ladies, who were both handicapped, one was blind and one had arthritis, 84 years old and 82 years old, began to pray during the night. That the Lord would come and bring a stirring to the island. Elderly ladies to usher in a great move of the Spirit. And so they sent word to an evangelist. His name was Duncan Campbell. That he would come to the islands and begin to preach. And he sent word back to them and said, I can't come, I'm sorry. They refused to accept no for an answer. Never mess with elderly saints, especially spiritual mothers that know how to pray. They said, on a fortnight, Duncan Campbell will be here. Spoken out as a prophetic decree. And sure enough, the Lord forced him to come. And he was there. He was only meant to be there for 10 days. But he ended up spending two years. There was such a move of God on these islands that people came from far and wide to see what God was doing. The police station was called one particular night that Duncan was preaching because flames of fire were seen on the church roof. <laughs> the glory of the Lord. When the firemen came, they discovered it wasn't flames of fire in the natural, it was flames of fire in the spirit. There were four services a night in order to handle the crowds that were coming in. And in the end, history was recorded as one of the greatest moves of God. When I read that story of the Hebridge revival and Duncan Campbell, I began to think to myself, if God moved on these set of islands, can God move in Brantford? Yes. Is there a group of men that can hear my voice right now that will get together and hear the word of the Lord that he's a covenant-keeping God? Is there some elderly mothers of the faith? Maybe you're crippled or maybe you're blind or maybe you have one handicap or another handicap, but you believe in the power of prayer and you're willing to get together and ask the Lord that he would bring a revelation of the holiness of God to Brantford, that the train of the Lord would fill the temple? Is there someone that will agree with me in prayer that God desires to do something in this city? I'm telling you, there's already people talking about Brantford. They're talking about Jesus. What Jesus is doing, I'm here to tell you, it's just begun. What can God do with four people that prayed in 1949? And what can God do if there's 10 or even 20 in this room that will begin to pray that the presence of the Lord would come and move in a powerful way? They would humble themselves before the Lord and see a mighty move of God. Three nights a week, every week for five months, they prayed 
to four or five in the morning during the Hebrews revival before it broke out. I pray that God would raise up intercessors. Amen. We gave a whole conference on that in January. If we want to see a great move of God, it must be birthed through prayer and intercession. A people that will gather together to pray and to fast and to seek and want more than just three points in a poem. Want more than just church as usual. Want more than just playing house of God. Want more than just a performance or hype in order to get an offering. They want the king of glory to come in. They want his train to fill the temple. They want the Lord to announce his presence. They want the holiness of God. They want all that he has to offer. So my prayer tonight is, Lord, capture our hearts. Capture our hearts, one said. Dig up those prayers and words and remind the Lord. Not that he needs reminded, but we just take those things that he had spoken and we say, Father, even as you said, according to your word, we thank you that you're going to bring a mighty move of God to our region, a mighty move of God to our city, a mighty move of God to our province, a mighty move of God to our country. Even as you moved to Toronto, I thank you that you're going to move in Brantford and it's going to affect those that are not only in the church building on this street, but the power of God's going to move from the door all the way out and it's going to move up and down the road and into the neighborhoods and into the parks and into the mall and into Taco Bell and into Walmart. It's going to move down the road. Hallelujah. Can a great move of God come? Even as we see in this picture a tsunami of the presence of the Lord coming and sweeping through a city. If God did it in Pensacola, if God did it in Lakeland, if God did it in the Hebrews Revival, if God did it in Toronto, can God do it in Frankfurt? Can he move by his spirit? Can his train fill the temple? Hallelujah, I'm so hungry for a move of God. I'm so hungry for a move of God. Second Chronicles chapter 5. Second Chronicles, I'm going to give you some more things. I gave you two of them already. Humility, the holiness of God attracts the presence of the Lord corporately and individually. I'm going to give you some more. Verse number 13 of 2 Chronicles chapter 5. And it says, And it came even to pass, as the trumpeters and the singers were as one. Amen. Unity yeah. attracts Amen. the presence of the Lord. Yes. I can literally go two hours just on what I'm giving you here. I'm just going to highlight some things. And I think as the, the weeks and the months go on, I'll pull some of the stuff back. Unity, unity attracts the presence of the Lord when churches stop competing with themselves and they start competing with the bar and the dance club and the places of worship of the enemy. When they stop competing and they start unifying with one another, the Lord is attracted to such a gathering. When revivalists stop competing with one another, someone trying to out-preach someone else. I remember I got a phone call. I won't even say when, but it was a while back, and someone wanted me to open up doors for them, and they told me that they can out-preach this one, and they can out-preach that one. And as soon as I heard that, I immediately was just like, presence of God. Just because one person stands at a pulpit and another one prays, the one at the pulpit's no better. In fact, I would say the one praying is probably lifted higher. You remember Charles Finney didn't go very far once Father Nash passed away. His chief prayer warrior. We must be people of prayer and we must stop competing with one another. I mentioned last night it was in the 50s where the tent revivalists were trying to compete with one another. Who had the biggest tent? Who cares? Who cares who has the bigger ministry? Who cares who has more Facebook followers? Who cares who has a bigger email list? It's not about competing against one another. 
It's about cooperating with the Lord and His plan and His agenda. And Rudy, when Chris is preaching to you in the conference in June, I'm going to be sitting in a seat and I'm going to be cheering him out. I hope he hits a home run. Amen. I hope blind eyes see. Deaf ears hear. I hope the dead is raised. I hope demons are cast out. I hope the waiting glory of God comes. And when I'm preaching, I know my friend Christopher Craig, my brother from another mother. He'll be cheering me out. Wanting to be used of the Lord. This is what the Lord is looking for. It's not about out singing someone else or out preaching someone else. Having a bigger gathering. Being more well known. I say these things because I believe when we really grab a revelation of it, it attracts the presence of the Lord. So it came to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make the sound, one sound, to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. So the next two are praising, attracts the presence of the Lord, and thankfulness attracts the presence of the Lord. Praise produces power. Praise produces power. Can you picture us during the conference? Scott Waterman's up there with his keyboard. And a spirit of praise just hits the house. Hallelujah. We begin to praise the Lord. We're waving our banners to the Lord. We're dancing like David danced. Even uncoordinated. So, honey, you came in that door. Amen. That your train filled the temple. Yes. That you walked through the center aisle of this church. <laughs> I was telling Sue and Charlie over lunch, I said, I hope 10 years from now, people are still talking about it. I remember those meetings Amen. in Brantford when the Lord came and touched my life. Amen. When there was a stir. When the deeper things of God began to change me from the inside out. Where the Spirit of God filled me. Where I went into the depths of His presence. Where I moved past His hands. To His heart. Where I brought a man out of the cold and out of the night air. I put a blanket of my love upon him. And I ushered him to the fireplace. And I sat with him and I kept him company. All night long, I sang to him. You are altogether lovely, Jesus. You are my closest friend. I love you more than I love anything else. I love you, Jesus. Your eyes have blazed like fire. Every time you look at me, you change my heart. You change my life. You are all together love. Wouldn't it be wonderful, 10 years from now, that we have that kind of fruit from these meetings? Not, oh, oh Steve preached some good sermons. No, Jesus came in the house. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus changed my life. Thanking the Lord attracts the presence of the Lord. You should have a service and do nothing but thank the Lord for what He's done. Thank you, Jesus, that I was lost but now I'm found. Thank you, Jesus, that you healed my body. Thank you, Jesus, that I was blind but now I see. I was on my way to hell and you rescued me. I was... I was I was deaf. I couldn't hear spiritually. I couldn't hear your voice. I didn't know your voice from the enemy's voice. And suddenly you came in. The, the shepherd came in and began to whisper in my ears. My spiritual ears opened up. And now I can hear. Hallelujah. Just thank him. You can spend a whole night. I think I talked about that last month. Just having a night of love sickness before the Lord. Where you're talking to him. And you're singing to him. And you're thanking him. Oh, that attracts the presence of the Lord. I can tell you times, I can take you to places where in the middle of the night, this presence of God filled the living room and I was a mess. And it happened because I was thanking Him. He's like, ooh, somebody's thanking me. See, the Lord's very polite. When somebody says, like our friend here, Caroline, if she invited us over for dinner, and I said, thank you so much, she would reply to me, wouldn't she? Would she just go? No. <laughs> Maybe if I have bad table manners. 
Well, the Lord's not going to sit there and just allow you to thank him and not respond. He will respond. He'll fill your bedroom. He'll fill your living room. He'll fill your prayer room <coughs> full of his manifest presence. And the tears will freely fall down your face because the king of glory has come in. Because he's thankful that you're thankful. Oh, hallelujah. Praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music. So there's worship that was taking place. I can give a whole message on that. Worship attracts the presence of the Lord. Soaking in the presence, waiting on the Lord, beholding him, attracts the presence of the Lord. And praising the Lord, saying, for he is good and his mercy endured forever. That then the house was filled with a cloud. Even the house of the Lord. So that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Oh. I desire that in 2018. That we would see the cloud of all glory fill the Lord's house. If the Lord responded to these things that I just gave you, will he not respond to those at Brantford who do the same? He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Look at chapter 7. I know I'm giving you a lot of stuff here tonight. I won't keep you here too long. Just another two, three hours. No, I'm just kidding. That's okay. That's fine. Chapter 7. You guys are... You guys are a hard audience to beat, you know? I go out there, came down from heaven. That's why when the brother, the brothers were up there singing and playing about the fire, I'm like, I got the right message. Wasn't worship good tonight? It's rich. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Verse number two, and the priest could not enter. Here we happen again. The house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled the Lord's house. Sacrifice attracted the fire and the presence of God. That's the next one. Sacrifice attracts the presence of the Lord. When you bring the sacrifice of praise, Amen. the sacrifice of giving, it's not just finances, it's giving of your time, it's, it's giving yourself to come to a service when you don't feel like it because you're tired. Sacrifice. The Lord is attracted to sacrifice. Amen. Amen. And notice that there was a sacrifice and the fire again comes down and the priest could not enter into it. Because of the fact that the Lord had filled the glory so full that they couldn't even do what they were exposed to be doing. You see, it's my job, I believe, to encourage you in the Lord. So that when the Lord wants to take over the service, he takes it over. Amen. And then we go with him. Yes. Yes. It's not just to get a message out. No. It's to see the Lord come and to move. Amen. And then we go with him. Amen. So there may be a service or two that we have that I never even get to the word. The Holy Spirit comes in and begins to, to move. Maybe he uses someone else. Hallelujah. We've got to be open to that. Now look at verse 14. This is my last scripture verse. And you all know this one because this is one of the most popular verses in the Bible. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Humility attracts the presence of the Lord. 
you, I gave a whole message on that last night. And just to let you know that I, I am recording these messages, I'm going to place last night's message and tonight's message on the website that I have, findrefuge.tv. And if you want to know where it's found, I have a special Brantford section of my website. It's findrefuge.tv backslash Brantford. And we have the conference that we did in January, and I'm going to place these two messages from last night and tonight. You'll see a link there with the date on it. And then you can download, download those MP3s for free. You can have them. We're not charging for them. We don't want to. And we're praying that those that could not make the meetings in Ontario, that they would get wind of those messages. That maybe it would cause a stirring in someone else's heart as well. Amen. I was just thinking about that. I would love to get a, a CD duplicator if I could and duplicate some of the messages. God, pursuing God attracts the presence of the Lord. In Psalms chapter 27, verse 8, it says, When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, Your face, Lord, will I seek. There are special seasons that the Lord has called us to seek Him afresh and anew. We seek Him for fresh anointing. We seek Him for a fresh touch, for fresh oil. We seek Him for a freshness of the Spirit to come. And as we spend time seeking Him, it attracts the presence of the Lord and it results in deliverance, new depth, greater effectiveness, breakthrough, a pushing back of the heavenly so that there's an open heaven, an atmosphere is created, we see salvations and healings. Isn't that an awesome thing? Yes. I want to see Brantford. I, I, I've thought about this so often. Brantford have that special open heaven. Yes. Like we were talking about last night. That as people enter the gates of the city, they would begin to tremble. Before they even hit this door, they would get arrested by the Spirit of God. The Lord would capture their hearts. Before I even get up to minister, the people are already be on their face before the Lord because they would be receiving a fresh revelation of the holiness of God. They would humble themselves before the Lord. They would be healed before man could even lay hands on them. That Jesus would heal them. That Jesus would set them free. Oh, during praise and worship, as the brothers are playing the guitar, demons are being cast out of people. Not even having to lay hands on them and cause a big scene in the middle of the service. Someone who's demon possessed comes in and, and they're set free. Amen. What would have been a two hour deliverance session only takes about a minute. Because that demon spirit can't handle being in the house of the Lord or the glory of the Lord is filling the Lord's house. The power of the Lord is coming. And in that presence and in that cloud. He was like, I'm getting out of here. Come on, Belzebub, we're getting out of here. You know? Can't stand it. Hallelujah. Oh, you're just saying that, Steve. No. Hallelujah. Where am I? Thank you, Jesus. As soon as I start talking about, talk about Brantford, I get excited. Pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Repentance attracts. I'm going to give a whole message on repentance one day. It's a very unpopular message. But it's the heart of the Lord. Turning from your wicked ways attracts the presence of the Lord. Because you're not just giving words, God, I'll do anything! And then you're tested and you find out that you just said those as words. When the presence of God comes and arrests an individual, they begin to match up their life message with their word message. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I will heal their land. So as we do these things, the Lord has made us three promises that he would hear, that he would forgive, and that he would heal. Do you want to see Brantford healed? Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Thank you, brother. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hear the Lord saying, so what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And we say to the Lord, Father, we will pray. We will seek. We're going to thank you. We're going to praise you. We're going to do everything that you desire for us to do. Because we're going to make room for you. That you would come in our city. Come in our church. And dwell. We refuse, Lord, to be a hindrance. Father, tonight I pray that you would give a major revelation of the holiness of God in this place. The holiness of God. Even as Isaiah received that revelation of the holiness of God into this region into this church building into our meetings we're preparing our hearts Lord we're preparing our hearts Lord for you to come in for your training to fill the temple For your train to fill the temple. I feel tonight that the Lord desires to fill you with a fresh refilling. I see in the spirit that there are some that you're, you're reaching out. You, I can see you reaching out saying, this is what I desire. But you need the Lord just to give you a special touch tonight. A special touch of His glory. It's like fresh gasoline in your tank to go the next mile. And so tonight, if you need a fresh touch, you need a fresh anointing, you need fresh oil, you need a fresh word from the Lord. You need the Father to come with His glory and touch you afresh. Mm. In just a moment, I'm going to ask you to get out of your seat. We're going to do it different tonight because the Lord does things differently. I'm going to ask you to get out of your seat. And we got plenty of room up here. And I'm going to ask you to come up here. I want you to take a step of faith and say, I'm leaving my chair and as I walk to the front, I'm leaving behind the way that I was. And I'm walking into a new season. Amen. A new season. And I'm going to pray for as many people as I possibly can. That the Lord would give you a fresh touch of the presence of the Lord. That you would leave this place absolutely full. I want you to leave this place with a skip in your step. And all next week and all this week, you're like, oh, Jesus did something special. You're not seeking after a zap. You're seeking after a person. But if you're ready to receive a fresh touch from the Lord, get out of your seat even now and meet me in the front. Don't hesitate. This has been a special message by Steve Porter of Refuge Ministries. For more information or books, articles, or products, please visit our website at www.findrefuge.tv. Refuge Ministries, a presence-driven ministry.